Hello everybody, this is um, a film about my update for my HDR light set. Um, I gave this away for free just two days ago and uh, yesterday I learned something about enhancing contrast in our HDR uh, images and the tips come from Peter Guthrie and, and uh, Beton Benoit. I'll give you the links in my Render Talk blog and it's um, all about enhancing contrast via editing the gamma value of the HDR images. So this is what you get when you use my defaults and it looks a little bit dim, the shadow is rather diffuse and you can do something about it and as you can see I improved my set and it looks like this. So of course the shadow uh, image depends on the HDR you use, we'll see this later on but uh, actually um, what you can see is that the shadow is much darker and crispier than before. So how did I do this? Well I just integrated a gamma value. This is the gamma from the filter um, tool, sh filter shader I used for the HDR image and for my render settings background image and they are integrated via Expresso in my user interface now. So this is new gamma and it's set to 1 at the moment. This is the settings you have in my uh, previous light set. Intensity 250, this is for this image of course, and gamma 1, this is the default. So when I change this to let's say 0.5 and the idea is to reduce the gamma to enhance the contrast and I reduce the background, oh no, uh, first of all I deal with the HDR lighting alone, not with the background, and when I use this gamma of 0 0.5 and have this picture rendered, it, it's much darker, but as you can see already the shadow is darker than before. Yeah, This is what it looks like, see the shadow? So this is, a, this is the difference I mean I'm talking about. Okay, so of course you have to do something to have this picture brighter again, this is much too grey, so we have to enhance intensity. I, figured this out and it's 1000 for this image and when I hit render it looks <coughs> as white as before but with a much more distinct shadow. Okay, so of course you can do the same with the background image, it's quite good enough but of course as you might anticipate we can do something about this too. So let's change the gamma to 0.9 we don't need that much change in the, for the background image and enhance intensity to 250 and now as you can see the sky becomes much more saturated and contrasty than before. I'll switch to the full screen view and compare those images. Just look at the sky, it looks much different, a little bit different. Okay, so this is quite nice I think and I'm very thankful to Peter Guthrie and, and Beton Benoit. I came about this by chance, this was not meant to, um, um, I, I didn't look for this but actually I came about it and it's, uh, it struck me and I think it's necessary that you know this. Okay so now why don't we use another HDR just to see how different HDR images, um, how different they are in, in, in as far as shadow is concerned. So let's take the Pure Light HDRI from Ronald Bickerman. It was downloadable for free from his site. I had to do something, I think I had to like his site or something. And why don't we put this HDR into the texture slot of my HDR light set and the JPEG edition in the background image. Okay, so let's render this. I think it's much too light. Actually, I know it's much too, much too bright, but <clears throat> this is just to show you or to demonstrate you how different HDR images are actually. So I figured this out and I came to 50 for the intensity and Ronald Beckerman himself recommends using as gamma 0.45. So this is just for the lighting, let's see what it does. 
and as you can already see, the background image is much too bright still, but as you can see already, the shadow is much more precise than it was with my other image. So this is of course dependent on the HDR image itself. The discrepancy between the bright spot in the middle, the sun, and the rest of the image is, I think, responsible for the level of detail the shadow has. So this is uh, just another shadow, actually, as we had here. Okay, so just as a last thing, we <coughs> adjust the intensity for the background. I think it was 52, and I think we should use gamma 0.452. So let's see what this does. <coughs> Sorry. I think it's okay. Good, so this is just what I wanted to show you. Um, the download file comes in the same with the same name. It's a library for Cinema 4D again, and the file is called RTHDR Stage 1.0. This is meant to be developed further on, so this is 1.0, and we'll see later on in the future how we can improve this still. Okay. So just one last thing, this is just about how I um, you know, sorted things out in my object manager. As you can see, there are no tags to be seen. The V-Ray HDRI DOM with all its, uh, its settings, the camera just with a V-Ray camera tag, and the dummy scene without material tag, texture tag. And this is because it's hidden in a layer called Tag Hideout. And as you know, as you might know, you can use layers to hide objects from being displayed in the managers. So this is under M, and when you click this, you see all those tags. This is the expression tags for the v HDRI dome, and this is also the expression for the camera aligning to the um, camera target. So this is just something I just didn't want to bother you with, so it's it's just hidden via this layer. So if in case you need it, in case you want to see it, in case you want to edit it and, and do something about the expression, you can of course unhide it and then do whatever you want. Okay, so this just as a reminder, so don't bother. Um, the things are not gone, they're just hidden. Okay, that was it. Hope you have fun. And let's see what we can do about all these things in future. I think up to now it's a pretty elegant and short way to configure an HDR light set. Have a nice time and bye.